Good morning. Thursday, February 8th, 2024. Got stuff on my phone here. Yes. <clears throat> well, it's uh, a little cloudy today. This has been just a little bit strange on the weather side of things. Uh, here, I'm not. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying it's been a little strange. We uh, had rain yesterday. We had rain last weekend. It's uh, uh, February, February eighth, and it's like spring, which is nice. I like the warmer weather. That 50 below wind chill was not fun, and don't really care to have that again. <laughs> And the rain is good. Uh, praise the Lord for the moisture. We'll, we'll take that and not complain a bit. Um, the cloudiness, though, has been kind of like your southern states or even Midwest, where the, the uh, sun will get behind the clouds and you might not see it for days. Um, I'm not a big fan of that. I do love the sunshine. and. Uh, Appreciate that. So, anyway, I hope everybody's having a good morning. Good morning, Randy. I hope things are good out there in Indiana. Did your snow finally melt, or do you guys still have snow out there? So, well, uh, I don't know. You guys kind of got dumped on there for a while. <laughs> All right. Um, so, I'm, I'm kind of behind. Uh, got a phone call that put me behind uh, so I didn't read much of the news. I did read a couple things. I just quickly uh, I saw that Tucker Carlson uh, snuck over to Russia and uh, interviewed um, uh, Putin and has the whole world upside down over that which whatever. And then I saw too that um, the average cost now of a Big Mac meal uh, the Big Mac with a medium pot, medium drink and a medium fry is $18. I, I mean, I had a hard time buying a Big Mac uh, at McDonald's when they were six bucks. I just, I, I'm not a, you guys know, I'm not a big McDonald's fan. And uh, I used to be able to, the only thing I liked about it is I could go there and, and I could buy two cheeseburgers and a sweet tea, and it was $3.21. <laughs> uh, that, that I do remember, but um, that kangaroo meat is getting more expensive, I see, so. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> anyway, that's uh, about enough of that news. Uh, I will not be on here tomorrow. We are uh, headed up to the mountains for the couple's retreat, and, uh, and so we'll uh, be leaving here pretty soon, and we'll not be back until uh, Saturday. Lord willing, we'll be back on Saturday. We're supposed to get into a bunch of snow up there, I think, so I think it's supposed to snow every day, uh, uh, whatever, so it'll be fun. We always enjoy ourselves while we're up there, and, and uh, it's just a uh, uh, I don't know. It's a, I think it's good team building too with the couples that come and, and get to know each other and uh, enjoy some downtime together. So looking forward to that. So I, I won't be on here tomorrow. So, but Lord willing, be back on here Monday for those in our church family. I'm planning on being back and preaching on Sunday. So uh, going to still be dealing uh, with the, the theme on Sunday of uh, confusion. Um, not sure where that's going to lead Sunday yet. Uh, I'm still thinking on two different things there, so you'll just have to come and find out. I'm also in, in our uh, uh, connections class dealing with uh, raising children in this world, and so... Um, hope you can come out for that and I pray that it'll be a blessing as we give thought to uh, raising our kids in a biblical fashion and I'm, I really do want to try to help families and 
and uh, dealing with that. And and I think what I'll I'm looking at doing I think on uh, this Sunday is uh, dealing with a, a prideful child and how do we deal with a prideful child? And so uh, how do we do that biblically? And uh, what does God say? So we'll get into that. And then Thane's preaching Sunday night. It's his Sunday night to preach. And so we're looking forward to a good Sunday and uh, just uh, hope everybody has a great weekend. And uh, anyway, let's get into the, the scripture now. Uh, Psalm 31 in my reading, it, it has split Psalm 31 into three different days. And so I, I already talked to you uh, yesterday about uh, verses 1 through 8. And and uh, just the encouragement it is to know that God is with us, right? Well, you get into verse 9, and, and I think it's a fair warning to all of us that it, it's in our darkest moments that, that we're having in our lives that's when the enemy really likes to attack. And that's why you have to be careful. I think we have to be careful of uh, uh, not only uh, darkest dark moments, whether it's a, uh, I don't know, there, there's several things that could be going on in your life that you could consider dark. You know, you could consider um, loss of a job, uh, loss of a loved one, uh, a, a divorce, uh, uh, a kid that has decided to make some decisions and, and go a wrong direction, or I, I don't know. I mean, there's all kinds of issues, but it also has, you, you need to be careful when you get sick physically. I mean, you're dealing with the flu, you're dealing with a cold. You, um, Susan has dealt with this uh, ongoing uh, breathing issue, and, you know, and I think of those in our church, you know, Joe, dealing with the the cancer, uh, Kevin dealing with his health issues and, and a shoulder issue and, you know, those kinds of things. And, and it's when we're dealing with some of those things, that's when the devil really likes to get after you and, and always be on guard, especially during those times. This is what it says. It says, have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. Mine eyes is consumed with grief, yea, my soul and my belly. For my life is spent with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength faileth because of mine iniquity, and my bones are consumed. And uh, so you're right, Paula. I'm, I'm telling you, we all need to pay attention to this. And uh, when you're sick, you're overly tired. Uh, it, it's when the devil can really get after you. And, and here we see that. And, and then even... Um, even your own thinking, and, and then you start thinking things, but also people do sometimes separate uh, if if you're not dealing with some of the, this darkness, right? It says, I was a reproach among all mine enemies, but especially among my neighbors, and a fear to mine acquaintance, they that did see me without fled from me, and I am forgotten as a dead man out of mine. I am like a broken vessel, and, and uh, so... And and I think some of this is thought up. I think some of it might be true. I, I think that sometimes if, if somebody's in a really dark place, people don't know what to say. Um, sometimes we're not very pleasant to be around when you're dealing with those kinds of uh, issues in your life. And so people do withdraw and and they uh, they pull back. And it's not that they don't care, but they also don't know what to do. And, and they also... Uh, it, I, it's kind of a reality is, is that if you are in this dark place and, and it's a, and, and I, look, I understand you got to work out of it. Okay. But so often it, it's a selfish mentality that's gotten you there. And, and people just don't want to be around that all the time, you know, and, and just be careful. You know, I, I think that, uh, yes, we need to, to, to get out of that, that cave that we're in and that dark spot and claw out. But um, sometimes all we do, and I'm my devotion, my problems, right? I mean, so often what we want to do is just talk about our problem. And uh, I'm just, I'm just kind of being brutal here, but people sometimes get tired of just hearing about your problems. And 
you know, fix your problems. Ask God to fix your problems instead of just dwelling on your problem over and over and over. And 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 people don't know how to how to deal with that. And so uh, I'm just saying, and I'm not trying to be mean, but sometimes we we uh, get overly concerned about ourselves, right? And people do withdraw from that. And let's work on it. And 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 really. Sometimes we like to sit there in our darkness, and it it pats us, and and we pat it, and and it, uh, you, you know, you just like being there in the dark, and and you you can't stay there, and God doesn't want you to stay there, and and then pretty soon it works itself into bitterness and and anger, and and then you start turning your back on other people, and then pretty soon you're by yourself, and then that's when the devil really gets you, and so. Be careful with those things. And and then here there are those that slander, and for I have heard the slander of many. Fear was on every side. When they took counsel together against me, they devised to take away my life. Uh, and, and that is exactly what the devil will do. He wants to destroy you, and he wants to destroy your family, and he wants to destroy your marriage. And we need to pay attention to that. And as we trust Christ as our, if you've trusted Christ as your Savior, and then as we grow as believers, we start understanding as we get older and as we get closer to God, we really do start understanding more of the spiritual battle that's going on and, and our eyes are awakened to that. And and we need to understand the way that we win this is verse 14. But I trusted in thee, O Lord, I said, thou art my God. You know, there, there are times when we need to remember what it says in James, and I believe it's James chapter 4, we need to submit ourselves to God. And so we need to remind ourselves we are, we are children of God. If we know Christ is our Savior and we're in this deep hole, this black hole, first of all, remind yourself, I am a child of God. And, and I, I am a, a, a creature that has been saved by the blood of Christ. And I now have the Holy Spirit of God indwelling in me. And so... Lord, I submit myself to you, and I know that whatever is going on in my life, you have allowed it. And I'm, I'm not saying these things are easy, okay? But we, we need to get to a point where if you're going to get out of that blackness, you have to submit yourself to God, right? And then resist the devil. And the devil is chirping in your ears and telling you that you deserve what you're getting. And and it's a hopeless situation, and you're never going to get out of it. And there's no way you can have victory, and there's no way you're going to win. And and he'll throw people in your face that, that will tell you there's no way for you to win, and there's no way that you're going to get out of this, and that you are in this hopeless situation. And there's going to be those that mock you, and there's going to be those that try to counsel you to turn your back on God, and, and all of those things, right? Well, you, you have to... Turn to God, all right? And and you need to resist the devil. And then it says that he will flee from you. But you can't just resist the devil and he will flee from you. You, first of all, have to submit yourself to God and, and do so. And how does David submit himself? He says in verse 15, My times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies and from them that persecute me. You know, we, we know that that our times are in his hand. And, and and so we trust him and we walk close to him. And and you know what? We allow him to work in our hearts through it. And we start seeing things that God is doing in our lives, even in the midst of all of our great grief and or stress or anger or whatever. And, and we see God working on that and, and uh, bring us out of that. And so uh, whatever the issue might be that you're in, Whatever the challenge, there might be somebody on here dealing with an addiction. I don't know. And, and if you are, I want you to know that God can help deliver you from that too. And we need to submit ourselves to him as a child of God and, and know that he can bring us out of that. And, and so just be careful. You know, it's our darkest moments is when the devil really gets after us, guys. And uh, protect yourself. If you're married, the spouse ought to you know, encourage you during that time. And, and, uh, don't, don't turn on your spouse during that time. You know, your spouse doesn't know what to do half the time either. And they're, 
they, they're the, your closest partner and they love you and they want to help you. And so uh, allow them to do that, right? <clears throat> anyway, and then I, I was reading in, in uh, Proverbs 8 and, and switching gears a little bit now. We, we see some things that, that uh, we ought to do and, uh, and, and we need to have the wisdom of God in our lives. And uh, he said in, in Proverbs 8, 11, for wisdom is better than rubies. Look, the most important thing you can have is, is wisdom. And one thing that, and I know it might get me in trouble at some point in time, but I, I, I replace in my own mind the word wisdom with Jesus, okay? Because it's God's word, it's Jesus's word that, that I use to, to uh, uh, direct my life and, and give me wisdom. And, and so I just say, Jesus is better than rubies. And, and what, what he teaches me, that's wisdom, right? And it's better than rubies. And all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Boy, isn't that the truth, right? And then I, wisdom, dwell with prudence. And so now when we have... When we have prudence, we have uh, uh, the the application of wisdom, right? And we have some understanding in, in how to apply God's word. And, and I find out knowledge of witty inventions. And, and uh, uh, when, when we look at the, the witty inventions, we, we see that uh, it's purpose and, and device and your plans and your discretion and how you act and, and how you live out your life. And, and so you, you do so out of knowledge of what God's word says, the knowledge of who God is. And, and it, it just changes your life. And uh, it, it's not, you're doing nothing of this to impress anyone. You're just, you're just living in a way that God gives you a wisdom and a, and a discernment and, and an action plan to live in a way that, God shows you in his word to live and, and he changes your life. And part of that then is verse 13. We do this because we do fear God. And, and, it, and it's not a, a trembling fear out of just a, a, an unhealthy fear, but it, it's a fear of reverence. You, you want to do the right thing for God. You, you want him to be pleased with us. And I do, and I'm sure you do too. And, and so that's the kind of fear that we're talking about here. We're talking about wanting to do the right thing and, and uh, uh, please him. And, and that's what even Paul said in Philippians about work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You, you need to prove to yourself your salvation by the way that you are living. And you're doing it out of fear and trembling to do what God wants you to do with a uh, and ex, uh, somewhat of a energized excitement to do what God wants you to do and, and um, guarding against not doing what you shouldn't do and, and those kinds of things. Well, the fear of the Lord, what do we do? Is to hate evil. Well, the, the evil deeds that are going on, we hate that. I mean, we're, we get stressed out about it sometimes and we shouldn't get stressed out, but we do need to hate the evil that's going on in this world. And... Uh, and there's all kinds of evil that are that is out there. I mean, you have the the violence that is taking place. You you have uh, you know the immorality that's being promoted. Oh, that's one thing. I saw that uh, the Pope came out again, and he said those that choose not to bless homosexual uh, uh, unions are hypocrites. <laughs> Uh, he's saying that the biggest hypocrite in the world. Every day he wakes up and looks himself in the mirror. He needs, he understands, he realizes he's a sinner just like the rest of us. And he has absolutely no power in his life other than what God will allow him to have. And, and until he humbles himself and comes to the realization that he can't save himself and that he isn't God, that he is not Jesus, that he needs to go to Jesus and he needs to bow himself and humble his heart and come to the, uh, the saving knowledge of what Jesus Christ has done for him. That man's going to split hell wide open. And here's, and, and that's just evil. You, you can, he can say what he wants. He cannot change what God's word says. That's God's word, not our word. And so God's word says that is not blessed and that will not ever be blessed. 
And that kind of a union is an abomination to God. Now, I'm not against those people, but I'm telling you, I'm against their union. And it is unbiblical, just like living together is unbiblical. To uh, Adultery is unbiblical, you know, whatever. I mean, lying is unbiblical. You're not going to say that those things are okay. They're not. Anyway, hate evil. Also hate pride. And, and first of all, let's, let's stop worrying about everybody else's pride and let's deal with our own pride. <laughs> pride. He hate, we need to hate pride. We need to hate evil. We need to hate pride. We need to hate arrogancy. And arrogancy is self-exaltation. So, I mean, every time we think about it, we, we watch football or whatever, and those guys pounding on their chest and doing their, you know, I, I, it, it just, you know, look at me, look at me, look at me. And, and then what do we turn around and do? We let our children play sports and we let them do the same thing or stand in the stands and we do the same thing. And, and what are we teaching our children? We're, we're teaching them to be prideful and arrogant. And let us be careful with those things. And we need to hate the evil way. We need to hate the froward mouth. And the froward mouth is a mouth of perversity and twisted mouth. And, you know, be careful what we say. And, and uh, these things, I mean, look, he tells us we ought to hate those things. So let's hate those things, right? And, and uh, first and foremost, hate them in our own lives and get them out of our lives, right? And then help others get it out of their lives. And, and uh, all right. <laughs> oh, that Pope, <clears throat> man, oh man. One day he's going to give an account to God. And, and unless he gets things right, it's going to be a bad day for that man. And uh, let's make sure that we're right with God, right? <clears throat> and let's just help each other and... You know, I, I think that, you know, you look at that and you think about how many, how many of those that are Catholics are, are swimming in confusion right now over what their, their Pope is telling them. I mean, think about the, the mess that that's causing and the stir that that has to be causing in the Catholic Church. And I mean, he's the leader of the Catholic Church and, and, uh, I don't know. I, I just, uh, and I don't think you can get mad at, at, at those. I think we just need to help, you know, and, uh, um, everybody needs to see Catholic, Baptist, you know, atheist, whatever. Everybody needs to see that Jesus is the way Jesus is the only way Jesus sacrifice that he made on that cross. He was buried after he died and, and he rose again and he's not on the cross anymore. He's in heaven at the right hand of God, making intercession for all those who will call and trust on his saving work. And we just need to encourage people that it's all about Jesus, not about it. We have no power. We, we have nothing. We, we, we do not even have control over what's going to happen to us today. We, we, we do not even have control over our breathing. God has control over everything. And we trust him. And we just look to him. And, and uh, I, I just feel bad for the confusion that's in our country, in our world today. And it doesn't have to be. You see, Satan's got to keep everybody confused. And he's got to keep all this loudness going on and um, keep people distracted because he knows that if people will see that Jesus is the answer, it'll change the world. <laughs> well, we're just doing our part, right? Whatever the, the six people are that watch this, we'll, uh, we're just doing our part, right? <laughs> All right. Anyway, the last thing here, I was in Matthew chapter 25, and, and I don't care who you are who's watching this, I'm not against you. And some of you may not agree with me, and, and that's all right. I have broad shoulders, and you'll apologize to me when you get to heaven. <laughs> uh, but I am, I'm not against you, but I'm all for Jesus and letting Jesus be first place in your life, and that's where we need to be, right? And uh, anyway, I was reading here, in, and I don't have time. We're about out of time here. Uh, but in Matthew chapter 25, 
And uh, I started with verse uh, 31. And uh, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he shall sit upon the throne of God. It says he'll separate the sheep from the goats. And, and, uh, and he goes on and, and uh, he said, tells the sheep, he says, The kingdom has been prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was in a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Uh, and and then they say, well, when 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 did we when when did we do these things? And and the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto me, one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. And then it goes on, and, and he casts out the goats who who didn't do any of that. I mean, they, they might have said that they were a believer, but they had nothing in their lives to back it up. And anyway, the, and I don't want to spend a lot of time on that part, but I, I just want to be reminded that I, I guess I would rather be a generous person, and sometimes people take advantage of that. I guess I'd rather be taken advantage of by being generous than being a miser. And, and just always being cynical and, and never willing to help anyone. And, you know, I, I think there are a ton of churches out there that, that have just flat said they're not going to help anyone. And, and uh, I don't think it's right. I think that, remember I talked about being radical? I think that we ought to be radically generous with what we have. I think we ought to be radically generous in our in our money, I think we ought to be radically generous in our time, and I think we ought to be radically generous in our in our in our talents, and and give them to God, and and uh, use what we have, and and uh, uh, but there are some, and they want to use the the term good steward, and all that means is we're going to be miserly. Well, I, I don't know. God takes it pretty seriously about helping those who are poor, and and there are times when. Maybe sometimes it is self-inflicted, and, and maybe it is, you, you know, being uh, just lazy. And, and if you don't work, you don't eat. I understand that. But not always is the case. And, and the, a lot of times it's because they've made a bad decision in their life. Well, have I made a bad decision in my life before? Absolutely. And so is everybody else. And anyway, just be radically generous with what we have. And then I... I, I see this interesting. It says that Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. You know, I I, um, I just find it just pretty pretty interesting that our Savior went into the house of someone that everybody else had rejected and didn't want any part of, and he walks in and he stays in the house of a leper. Now, first thing is Jesus healed it. I, I'm positive Jesus healed his leprosy. And so... Uh, somebody back in 2020, uh, he used to be a friend on Facebook. You know, he, he was trying to point out that he said that Jesus would have worn a mask. No, he wouldn't have. Uh, that's heretical. It, he, he would not have worn a mask. Jesus Christ would have healed those who had COVID as he walked around on the streets and wh whoever he met. And, and uh, uh, I just find it interesting that Jesus always went to those that were in need and those that were the, the outcasts of society, and it was those that Jesus spent time with, you know? And it just really, I don't know, that's our Savior, right? And then I'm reminded again, just, you know what, walk humbly. Because it goes on, it says that while they're there at the, at the house of uh, Simon the leper, that um, there came a woman, have an alabaster box, a very precious ointment, and, and anointed Jesus' feet, right? <clears throat> and he says this in verse 13, Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman hath done be told for a memorial of her. Remember God said hate pride and hate arrogancy, and arrogancy is self-exaltation, right? Well, here's a woman that all she wanted to do was worship Jesus, and we are still reading about her over 2,000 years later. And all she wanted to do was worship Jesus. Can I tell you, that's what we need to do today. We need to worship Jesus. We, we need to tell people about him and, and we need to walk so close to him that, 
that people can see Jesus in us. And uh, you, you know what? Those that are battling addictions, you know what we do? We, we reach out to them and do what we can to help them, right? That's what Jesus would do. We can't heal them, but Jesus can. With those that are that are poor and needy, we we do our best to help them. We're not we're not going to allow them to take advantage of us if we know it, but we're going to help them a, along the way. The the you you know someone that's having marital problems, we're going to reach out and we're going to try to do our best to help them. If they have a wayward child, we're not going to be pointing fingers at the way that they raise their children. We're just going to help them where they're at, right? I mean, those that have made bad decisions, we're going to help them. <laughs> ah, let's just give ourselves to the ministry of the Lord and, and we can see God do something great. Let's change the world. And we may not be able to change all the world, but we can sure change somebody's world. So let's stay busy telling people about Jesus. Hey, <clears throat> God bless you guys. Let's have a great weekend. See you on Sunday. And uh, Lord willing, we'll be back on here Monday. God bless.